Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine. Sam Adams. Sam Adams. Sam Adams. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell, who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. Will Rogers said this best, and I couldn't agree more. We could certainly slow the aging process down if it had to work its way through Congress. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Here comes Kate Smith, and God bless America. On a Tuesday, good morning. We need a Pledge of Allegiance person with the Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Zeb at the Ranch. I'm Zeb Bell, and thank you very much, along with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations, serving you with a big fall tire sale right now, and along with some of our good advertisers, great advertisers like Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Call 734-6969. And right now, without further ado, our Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Well, in just a minute, I'm going to tell you about a great big goof I made. So you do the pledge, and then I'll tell everybody, okay? Okay. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, now you stay on the line with me, Lorna, because here's my great big goof. I really made a big mistake. You know what I did? What? I said to everybody, Lunch Bunch was next week. It's this Thursday. Oh, I'm so embarrassed. It's this Thursday. Uh, Jean, was, Jean called me yesterday and said, is Lunch Bunch this week? And I said, no, I'm sure he said the 27th. <laughs> know what he was talking about no i made a that way before yeah i know but we had to move it up a week for some other things and i am absolutely embarrassed i i'm on the floor crying and wailing and pulling up my hair and gnashing my teeth i'm so sorry it's this thursday well that's only a couple of days so that's exciting okay <laughs> god bless you nice to have you on the air thanks lorna have a great day. All right, thank All right. you. I goofed. I know people love it. There are those in the audience, and even one here in this office, that loves it when I make a mistake, and I did. It's this week, Lunch Bunch. This Thursday. Not next week, this Thursday. Oh, I'm so sorry. Right now, let's go to the weather forecast quickly. And the weather is brought to you by Cheney Flooring and Home Design. Oh, my goodness. 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley. Look for that blue door. Now's the time to put down new, 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 new tile. All in stock tile is on sale. I mean, they've got everything on sale over there for a great big October, huge fall sale. You better stop over and see them today. Wonderful people. Kyle and Whitney Cheney, Flooring and Home Design. 12 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley. Look for that blue door. Here's Gina with the weather. It's going to be cloudy and windy today for this Tuesday. No big surprise as it is mid October. Winds out of the west right around 25 miles. Winds out of the west right around 20 miles an hour for today. High of 49 is what we're looking at. Tonight, low of 32. Tomorrow, everything is going to be calming down. Sunny skies, high of 53. Overnight, low of 31. For Thursday, partly cloudy skies, high of 60.
60, overnight low of 35, and it's going to be nice as we kick off the weekend. Sunny skies, high of 65. Yesterday's high was 53, the overnight low was 38. That is your weather for Zebeth Ranch. And thank you, Gina. Appreciate it. Brought to you by Cheney Flooring and Home Design, 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley. Yep. Look for that blue door. I'm really embarrassed. I forg- I made the wrong mistake on the calendar. I can't believe I did that. Anyway, don't forget Burley Livestock Sale Yard, 1100 Occidental Avenue in Burley. Sale number 6789411. 6789411. You call for cattle consignments and talk to the best that work for you. Merv May, Cade Rocky, Lance Udy. 6789411 for consignments of your cattle at the sale on Thursday, starting at probably Probably 10.30 a.m. Burley Livestock Sale Yard. Don't you miss it. Oh, man. We got a lot of things to do this morning. And uh, my thanks to everybody that uh, was call, has called and worried about when Lunch Punch was. And then I looked at my calendar, which I should have done a long time ago because I made a mistake. It is this Thursday, the 20th. There, I stand corrected. Whip me! I'm sorry. Don't forget Daryl's Cleaners, 1223 Albion Avenue in Burley. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Kevin and Cindy and the whole crew, and they do make cleaning easy and convenient, and you'll always have the best of appearance with your clothes by taking them in to Daryl's Cleaners, 1223 Albion Avenue in Burley. I don't care what it is. You take it in there. If it needs to be cleaned, oh, my, they are the best. And by the way, if you want to prepay on your bill, you get a 10% discount at Daryl's Cleaners in Burley. And also, let's not forget our friends over at SafeLink Internet. Oh, my goodness, they've got extended hours of technical support and a whole bunch of techies that can help you with your Internet, and I suggest you call and get on the program. Fast, reliable, and believe me, we've been on it for years. Absolutely appreciate these folks. Number to call, get on the SafeLink Internet program, 677-8000. That number again, 677-8000, SafeLink Internet, serving you today on the program i'm just going to kind of relax a little bit and get away from a lot of the politics even though i know we've only got about 20 days left but uh, at 9.06, Frosty and I are going to get into it a little bit about uh, Hillary and all the illegalities, et cetera. You're not going to believe some of the things I've got here in just a minute. And then at 9.30, we've got Tony McCam, and he's a master gardener. Oh, master gardener! And he's going to tell us what to do in the fall. Dr. History at 10.06. And then, bear with me a little bit, we've got a couple of stories at 10.30 this morning. And then yours truly has to gallop right after the 10.45 weather. I've got a doctor's appointment to get to. i got a long way to go and not much time to get there out of the Smokey and the Bandit phraseology. And we're going to rely on my dear friend Wheels to kind of cover a little bit for about 10 minutes or so so I can get on the road and run. So that's the program for this morning. Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. Number to call 678-0459. They're open at 730 in the morning till 5, Monday through Friday. And uh, a little bit cooler in the morning, isn't it? Yeah, I know. (laughs) You you went out in the kitchen to get a drink of water and hit that cold linoleum floor and went, whoo, baby, it's chilly. Well, I tell you what, make sure your furnace is working correctly and efficiently. Get the furnace filters at Ramsey Heating and Electric in Burley. Once again, call ahead. They'll have them ready for you at 678-0459. Ramsey Heating and Electric, where they provide warm winters. And cool summers. Okay, now, I get a chance to correct myself again. Uh, I am going to say this again. We are having Lunch Bunch this Thursday at 611 Overland and Burley at Denny's Restaurant, America's Diner. Yes, we are. Absolutely the best of breakfast, lunch, and dinner anytime, all the time. Wonderful people serving you. And they also have a location at 291 Pole Line in Twin Falls. Mm-mm-mm. Thomas and Terry, the whole crew wonderful people serving you at america's diner denny's restaurant 611 overland in berlin and again don't forget lunch bunch this t-h-i-s underline this week on thursday thank you good morning caller you're on the air good morning sir yeah i goofed didn't i 
<laughs> I had a dumb spot. <laughs> well, I'm glad we can laugh at ourselves. Cause if you can't laugh at yourself, then life's going to be long and hard. Let me share something with you, Dougie. When I found out I goofed, I didn't put a smile on my face. <laughs> Put one on ours. <laughs> you know what? It was so obvious. I was talking to my lovely blushing bride last night, and I said, boy, that's going to make for a long Thursday next week. And she said, uh, no, no, we changed lunch bunch. You know that till this week. And I went, well, I won't tell you exactly what I said because I don't think I'm allowed to, but I did say something in the form of an adult oops. Like bovine dropping? Uh, uh, it would, might have been a little bit shaded more than that. <laughs> anyway, so that means i got to get busy and make me a couple more cup holders. Well, get on with it. What's the matter with you? Didn't you know when Lunch Bunch was? <laughs> oh, <sir. laughs> what can I do for you? Well, I'm quite disturbed about these videos that come out on Hannity. Oh, boy. Showing these... Democrat associations, you know, the people that are fighting for the Democrats, yeah. how they are paying homeless people to incite riots and yeah. cause problems at rallies. How yeah. low can they go? You know, and Doug, it's it's a lot more perverted than just what they're doing now. I mean, they've been doing it for a long, long time. They've been getting professional agitators. They started it way back at Ferguson, Missouri, to make the situation a lightning rod. I, I just... I got to be really honest with you, Doug. I am absolutely working every day to try to get David Clark. You know who he is, Milwaukee County Sheriff. And his schedule is just jam crammed packed. And I'm trying with all I can to get him on my program to discuss what's going on. He's the only one in the media that will take a stance as a professional law enforcement person and tell it like it is. And this is a, it's such a total Frankenstein mess that's been created. Yeah, and they were even doing that back before Ferguson. They were doing yeah. that when they were trying to take over Wall Street. Yeah, it's yeah. The same stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's it's disgusting, and if, if that doesn't make you upset, I don't care, Democrat, Republican, when our government has come down to this if that doesn't make you upset and want to change you are part of the problem yeah but there's another part of the equation you didn't put in it's threefold number one we are part of the problem government's a part of the problem but there's also another piece of the pie and that's the media lying to us exactly exactly and i've had people on the left that i've had discussions with they name this stuff and i said well Go check out this book. Go go watch this movie. Go, you know, go read this article. Oh, that's all propaganda. Yeah, I yeah. Said, so you make up your mind for the future of your children and your grandchildren on one side of an argument. You know, and that has been said to me, and I want to share this with you real quick, and then I've got a gazillion commercials to do, and a gazillion's a lot more than a bazillion, by the way. Uh, but I have been accused of, uh, let's say, enamoring the facts and enlarging the truth. I dare you, as a dear friend, or even if you weren't, to tell me an instance on this program where I have enhanced the actual facts. The facts and presented them how they are. You haven't embellished them. You haven't enhanced them. Not like the other side where they enhance the narrative and gloss over the facts. Yeah. yeah. They've got the attitude of. Don't confuse me with the facts. My mind's already made up. And unfortunately, I think you've hit the nail right on the proverbial head. The left and its followers are like blind, stupid sheep being led over a cliff. Exactly. And how how they can see what's... They, they've got to be able to see what's happening. I mean, my 
even Ray Charles can see what's going on in this country right now. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, uh, I'm afraid as we get closer hour by hour, minute by minute, to the actual election, let's just say it this way, the story ain't done yet. <laughs> no, sir, it is. All right. Fight, buddy. I will, buddy. Hey, thanks. God bless you. Thank you so much. November 8, vote yes on HJR5. Your voice needs to be heard, and you should always be able to hold our state of government accountable. Vote yes on HJR5. Don't let activist courts take away our legislators' authority to approve or reject agency rules. Vote yes on HJR5. Paid for by Speaker Scott Bedke, Representative Fred Wood, and Senator Kelly Anthon. And also, don't forget Jack Johnson running for Twin Falls County Commissioner, District 3. I've had this man on my program. He will be responsive to your needs. And he wants a maintained balance approach to economic and agricultural needs. And he wants to work with city councils and citizens to form a strong working relationship. Don't forget, on November 8th, vote for Jack Johnson, Twin Falls County Commissioner, District 3, paid for by... Elect Jack Johnson for Commissioner, Darren Kyle, Treasurer. All right, calls are welcome and appreciated. 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. The absolute worst <laughs> is coming out about the Clintons. You know, just about the time that you thought Wild Bill... And all he did, all of his uh, different crazy, zany acts as president, and uh, the blue dress, Monica Lewinsky, et cetera, et cetera, ad nauseum, was put to rest while Bill is still at it. He's still at it. He is still partying with the gals. Hillary knows it. And he's still having parties at penthouses and swim parties on rooftops. And old Bill, old Bill, is still up to his old self. And Hillary, just a minute, caller, I'll be right there, I promise. But Hillary, and I've really done some research on this, thanks to my wife, is one of the most rude, selfish, demeaning women ever. I mean, this... Oh, would I like to use the terminology that I did off the air. This woman is absolutely repulsive. Even the Secret Service agents have said, "Uh uh-uh, transfer me to Outer Mongolia, but don't put me in the service helping Hillary. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. Caller, go ahead. You're on the air. Good morning, Zeb. Yes, sir. You know, last night, Donald Trump was in Green Bay, Wisconsin. And did you, it was on C-SPAN, did you happen to see any of it? I saw a little bit of it, Keith. Go ahead quickly. What's the point? Well, one thing, his hero was there. Uh, Brett Favre, I didn't know what his position was, but it sounds like he's one of us. Mm Mm-hmm. These emails, man, if he could just get across, there is, it's like the lines of communication have been cut when it comes to talking about Hillary. Yeah, and these emails, yeah, these emails, Keith. People like you and, and Sean Hannity and people like that that prop this thing up because the news media doesn't even carry one little teeny bit of what these emails are doing, and they will destroy her if they can get out in the public. They should have, they being the emails and the illegalities and the absolute uh, vileness of these emails, they should have buried the Clinton campaign a long time ago, but it's only through the media aiding and assisting a liberal Democrat and burying on page 37, if they carry it at all, uh, this is absolutely a heinous act by the media. I have lost all my respect for ABC, CBS, NBC, I don't care who it is. They are a bunch of losers. That's certainly true. You know, there was one commentator that I really believe in said that if the news media would treat things equal, Donald Trump would be ahead by 20 points. I've heard the same thing, yeah. Yeah. 
Keith, God bless you I for your. That would be true because every once in a while you switch to see what the other side is doing, and my gosh, yeah, these people are just bashing the conservatives something terrible. Absolutely, Keith. I got to run and do a commercial break, but thank you very much for your input. You're spot on. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Have a beautiful and rainy. Okay, <laughs> I will. Hey, don't forget Jim Patrick running for re-election for District 25 Senator. He's fifth-generation Magic Valley resident and really involved in the community. With agricultural education and business committees he served on, also served on the JFAC committee. He knows and he can help us. Don't forget on November 8th, re-elect Jim Patrick for District 25 Senator, paid for by re-elect Patrick for Senate Treasurer Jim Patrick. Patrick. Also want to talk about an old friend of mine, and that, of course, is Charlie Howell over in Jerome. Hello, Charlie. I'll tell you what, this guy right now is running for District 2 Jerome County Commissioner. Charlie has spearheaded the jail project for over the last 10 years and has really helped refine the project to match what the county and the citizens perceived as what they needed. Don't forget, he believes and demonstrates in team play, so remember, re-elect Charlie Howell for a Another four-year term, Charlie Howell for Jerome County Commissioner, paid for by Brenda Haddam, Treasurer. Thank you very much. Calls are welcome and appreciated. 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. I want to get into, <coughs> excuse me, my cough. I want to get into a little bit of some of the direct quotes and some of the direct statements of the uh, Secret Service and others that have worked with or around Hillary Clinton in just a few moments, so stay tuned. Don't forget Senior Junction Pumpkin Function coming up October 27th at the Senior Junction, 2421 Overland in Burley. Big breakfast starting at 7. Remote broadcast. I'll be there for three hours and a lot of Halloween fun. We'll tell you more about that in just a few moments. Caller, I'll be there in a second. Stay tuned. Barry Equipment and Rental, don't forget to three, three locations serving you on South Lincoln and Jerome <coughs> and a cough over at Addison Avenue West in Twin Falls and 159 West Highway 30 in Burley. They have all the equipment to get the job done right. And listen to this zero, zero, nada interest on 48 months if you buy an, any rental of Bobcat equipment used today. Holy cow! Yeah, you better buy that at 0% interest for 48 months. Barry Equipment and Rental. Absolutely the best with equipment rentals and equipment sales. South Lincoln and Jerome, Addison Avenue West in Twin Falls and 159 West Highway 30 in Burley. Really, really good folks. Uh, caller, I'll be right there. Stay tuned. Don't forget Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation. Man, I was in the pool yesterday. Yes, I was. That really helps. I'm telling you, the strength of my leg has come back far, far more than I thought it would. Yeah, it's an old leg. I'm an old body. Anyway, Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley. Nick Greenwell, ex so, <laughs> I bit my tongue. Absolutely the best with physical therapy and all of his physical therapists helping you get back to being you. Wonderful people with great knowledge. 678-1191. 678-1191. Eight one one nine one Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation. The best. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Hey, Zeb. How are you? Absolutely phenomenal. What can I do for you, sir? Uh, I'd like to talk about these emails. Um, I've been looking at them, you know, for the last couple months, and especially the new ones with the Clintons and the media payoff, how they paid off Glenn Beck, how they paid off a lot of these different media uh, people and I mean, if you look at it, the insurance, all the insurance companies are all bought out by the government. You've got the car industry that's bought out, and now they're buying out all the media. And it's like, what's the difference? I mean, it's truly, uh, it's a rigged game. And seeing the polls, I don't believe it at all. Walking around in this town in Burley, I don't know anyone that's voting for Clinton. All right, no. anyone that's informed knows that this is all a big scam. And seeing that the Clintons have been uh, paying everyone off, I mean, 
when's it going to stop? When is someone going to arrest her? When is someone going to arrest all these people in the media for treason? Okay, now, I agree with what you said, but I hope you will not take uh, issue with me and agree with me on the way I'd like to correct your statement. A lot of what you said is speculative, and it has not been proven. So on this program, I always use the words allegedly or supposedly. And a lot of your allegations that you made, I know, are probably going to come to fruition. But I use the terms allegedly, and I think you'll understand why. Sure, sure. I, I mean, absolutely. Everything has to be proven in court. Now, if the judges are all paid off, <laughs> and then how's it ever going to get proven? When do we have enough evidence to call it not speculative and to call it fact? Absolutely. And see, what we're living in right now is a complete truth void. When I say a truth void, you're probably just like me. I've got very, very few people on a national level that I trust. I've got a handful of people back in Washington, D.C. that I work with on a daily basis that I trust. They are going to look at the news, they're going to tell me what's going on, and they're not going to overshadow it with anything that's phony or uh, unbelievable. So I agree with you. We're being told and force-fed a bunch of garbage on CBS, ABC, NBC, C and it doesn't make any difference who and the public thanks to the power and underline this word and phrase the power of the clinton political machine is absolutely in control on this election i i agree with you i agree with you and i'm not one to say something is something before it is proven but when you look at the signs and you look at What's really happening in this nation? You look at how truth is being. I mean, if you if you have critical thinking skills, you're shunned. If yeah. you go along with whatever the media says, oh, well, you're an informed person. And I mean, I don't want to get too uh, you know too spiritual about this, but I believe that God instills the truth in people that search for it. I agree and with that. If you if you truly believe that truth is important. You will, I mean, the Holy Spirit will let you know what is right and what is wrong, and it is obvious to me that this is a rigged game against Trump. It's a rigged game when it comes to taxes. And, I mean, they're trying to blame the American people that, hey, we're in this big tax debt and we're in this big problem because of all of you, the American people. Yeah. Well, all the Americans I know, they go to work every day. They're working their butt off. And yep. this debt that's being incurred for the national deficit isn't our debt it's the debt of the politicians and the greed that has overcome this country and it's sad because the your common guy is going to ask to be bailed out on all this and absolutely tax money that does it and i mean when's enough enough i agree with you I think that what your your small little dissertation right there was spot on. As a matter of fact, I'm going to save that clip, uh, talk to my webmaster, and I'm going to have that for a replay. You, you did a very good job of giving a synopsis of what the problems are. The left with their platform on pro-abortion and economic ruin, steal from the rich, if you will, and try to provide the Robin Hood theory, which it's not to the poor, ISIS, our national or lack of security, uh, stealing from Social Security, the list goes on and on. Caller, I've got to get a commercial break in and then the next call, but God bless you for your thoughts. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Caller number two, I'll be right there. I promise. I'm uh, I'm running around in circles, and I just met myself. Hello, Zeb. Anyway, I'll be right there. Don't forget Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids, and they're located across from the Minidoka Hospital Emergency Room. Number to call for a hearing screening with the lovely Dr. Christine Pickup. Oh, my. 312-0957. That number again? 312 312- 0957 and learn how you can protect your hearing or even help get your hearing restored. Yes, Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids, absolutely the best. 312 0957.
Also, quickly, and that's what I have to do on this program this morning for the next three weeks, quickly, I want to remind everybody that I lost the next commercial. <laughs> Here it is. Jack Nelson's running for CSI Zone 3 trustee, a member of the Jerome County Planning and Zoning, a member of the Mid-Snake Water Commission, former CSI teacher in the 80s, music and choir. This man knows all the intricacies of CSI and wants your vote. Jack Nelson, CSI Zone 3 trustee, paid for by Jack Nelson. Nelson for CSI trustee. Uh, caller, good morning. You're on the air. Yes. Uh, uh, this morning, my wife read me a, a law that says, uh, states frankly and clearly how Hillary Clinton is totally disqualified to be even running for office because of what she did with her emails. And Michael Mukasey is the one who had stated this law. And, uh, and you see... There is straight up evidence there to, to disqualify her. And you can hear we're out here and every day, you know, you know, we might get caught speeding so we pay our ticket, don't we? Yep. And we do we abide by the law because you know, in some cases we're just straight up appraised. And here she just skates, gets away with everything and you say to yourself, When? When do we get justice? And you call back to your, you better call back to your congressmen and senators and, and let them know how you feel. Well, believe me, I wear that line out. And it does really, I can't see that it's done any good, but I'm just one person. Well, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stop for a minute. What you just said, though, is frustrating for me and everybody else. I, too, am sick and tired of getting a grade three person on the air. And when I say grade three, I'm talking about somebody that can barely take down a phone number, let alone a legitimate note that I want transferred to my congressman or my senator. I don't want that. I want these pe You know what, Randy? I've told you this privately, and I've told you this on the air. I am sick up past the top of my resist-all hat about the absolute smugness of these politicians basically telling me that I have to call them, chase them like a dog chasing a parked car to get them on the radio. They should make time once a week to come on this program and answer questions, not from me alone, but from you, the constituency. And they're not doing their doggone job. Well, and see, this is the thing, like I've stated so many times in the past, if I was to call in every day and I was disrespectful and I was saying words that were just on the edge of, of you know, being illegal to say on the air, and I continued to do it, eventually you would say, listen, uh, we can't let you call in anymore. We just can't run the risk anymore. You see? Well... Uh, see, I would understand that. And see, when, when we can't do the same to our elected officials, and we cannot hold our feet to the fire, and it comes down to one thing, one thing. If we don't show up and vote, and then I was in Salt Lake yesterday, and I'm, this will be my last day. Yeah, quickly, Randy. And he had a minister on there. One of, I was listening to all the local talk shows. And he, the, the, the minister, him hard around, and then, and then, and then, and then, you know, he didn't like Trump's morals. And, but in the end, he says, well, I have no choice but to vote for Trump. Yeah. And I go, well, duh, that's where we are, Zap. People think that somehow we've got some righteous dominion here because we think we're going to judge ourselves, be judged if we vote for Trump. It's our country that's on the cost here. I agree. Very well stated, Randy. Thank you. i got to get into a commercial break. Thank you very much. Yeah, what he said is true. I mean, you start reading. Do your own investigatory work. Start reading about what kinds of people you may be supporting, whether it's Hillary Clinton or whether it's somebody on the left right here in Magic Valley. Start reading and understanding what they're saying, what they're supporting, what their platform is. Ask questions. We got a bunch of losers that are running for an office that may have a huge influence on your life. 
And I got to tell you, I've loved doing this program over the many, many, many years. But I am not the only person that should be doing the work. I am not the only person that should be doing the investigating or possibly uncovering some unsavory facts. You should be too. Don't forget Ark Animal Hospital at 750 21st Street near Connection Credit Union in Hayburn. My goodness, these are wonderful people. Dr. Bill and all the employees at Ark Animal invite you to bring the children to the Rupert Square for a trunk or treat on Halloween. Oh, man, it's going to be fun. Halloween night from 6.30 to 9 p.m. And uh, the square is going to be filled with cars decorated and their trunks open, and they're going to be given prizes to the best decorated car and the top three vendors. This is really Really a neat community activity. Thank you, Ark Animal Hospital, along with Dr. Bill and everybody in Hayburn. Wonderful people that have warm hearts for cold noses. Thank you very, very much. Also, our thanks go out to Ramsey Heating and Electric offering rebates on qualified Lennox home comfort systems. Yeah, buddy, listen, uh, whether it's gas furnaces, air conditioners, heat pumps, you and your family will enjoy the comfort. Call them today at 678-0459 and learn how Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox can save you money. Let me just give you some uh, things that have happened and are verified. Good morning, ma'am. A member of the Uniformed Secret Service once greeted Hillary Clinton, and she said, blank off, get out of my way. Hmm, what a nice lady. And then former agent Jeff Crane says, Hillary would cuss at Secret Service drivers for going over bumps in the road. (coughs) Another person, pardon the cough, Secret agent, Secret Service agent, Lloyd Bullman recalls, she wouldn't go over and meet military people or police officers as most protectees do. She was just really rude to almost everybody. She'd act like she didn't want you around, like you were beneath her, talking of Hillary Clinton. And then, even the private sector, Hillary one day ran into a White House electrician who was changing a light bulb in the upstairs family quarters. She screamed at him because she had demanded that all repairs be performed while the Clintons were outside the executive mansion. She caught the guy on a ladder fixing the light bulb, And by the time she got done, Hillary got done chewing on him, he was a complete basket case. Oh, yeah, and then let's not forget, she's in upstate New York as a United States senator. And she was upstate in New York going to attend a 4-H club meeting. As one Secret Service agent said, Hillary saw farmers and cows and then erupted into a mild tantrum and she said, What the blank did we come here for? There's no money here. Hmm. And then one of the best quotes yet, Ron Kessler, a person that has been on my program has written many, many books about the Clintons, and he said that a person that used to be a staffer with the Clinton Foundation and also the Clintons in the White House, quote, no one would hire such a person to work at McDonald's, and yet she is being considered for being the President of the United States. A disgusting, very low-class person. Hillary Clinton. It's time for our weather forecast. And again, my apologies for this cough. Sooner or later, hopefully sooner, I'll get over the hay fever for this year. I apologize for that. Uh, Don't forget our dear friends at the Urgent Cares. Riverview Urgent Care, 382 North Overland and Burley. Twin Falls Urgent Care, 2392 Addison Avenue East in Twin Falls. And Jerome Urgent Care, 133 West Avenue A in Jerome. My goodness sakes, minor emergencies, major care. They really help you. And don't forget, you can get your flu shots there. Yes, sir, Reed. 
you stop in and check them out today. The flu shots at $20, uh, I believe it is. And uh, be safe in this flu season, thanks to going into the urgent cares. And right now, here's Gina with the weather. It's going to be cloudy and windy today for this Tuesday. No big surprise, as it is mid-October. Winds out of the west right around 25 miles. Winds out of the west right around 20 miles an hour for today. High of 49 is what we're looking at tonight. Low of 32. Tomorrow, everything is going to be calming down. Sunny skies, high of 53. Overnight, low of 31. For Thursday, partly cloudy skies, high of 60. Overnight, low of 35. And it's going to be nice as we kick off the weekend. Sunny skies, high of 65. Yesterday's high was 53. The overnight low was 38. That is your weather for Zebeth Ranch. You got to turn the mic on, Zeb. That a boy. I'm I'm new at this. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Anyway, don't forget. Brought to you by the Urgent Cares. Go to their website, urgentcareofidaho.com, and check them out. They are there to serve you with minor emergencies, major care. You stop in and see them today. Riverview Urgent Care in Burley, Twin Falls Urgent Care in Twin, and Jerome Urgent Care in Jerome. Calls are welcome and appreciated, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. I'm not making this stuff up, nor am I enamoring the facts. I'm giving you the straight truth on this about how absolutely ugly Hillary can be to anyone that uh, she thinks is under her. And that means almost everybody. Uh, Within the White House, Hillary had a standing rule that no one spoke to her when she was going from one location in the White House to the other, says former FBI agent Coy Copeland. In fact, anyone who would see her coming would just step into the first available office and wait until she passed by. Who does she think she is? I mean, when the cameras are off and the lights have been turned down... And she's not a focal point for the news. She is one of the most vile, hateful, repugnant women in America today. I got to tell you that, uh, do I believe all these statements? Absolutely. Do I believe that these people working, whether it's an aide at the White House or the Secret Service or whatever, that they're stepping forward and saying, now, man, how in the world could we put somebody in as president? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. And I just hope America wakes up on November 8th and says no, no, to a family that has gained so much money and so much power. They say no to the Clinton machine. Calls are welcome, 436 to 2 four four one eight six six nine two seven four five eight seven and along with that story this morning yes or no this story just seems to get bigger and it starts to keep spinning and some pieces of it fall out on the floor and everything the story about the state department our state department is being accused and i'm going to put it in my language of strong-arming the FBI to change documents from classified to something else. Hmm. You know, if these things that are talked about really come to fruition, if these intimations and allegations come to fruition regardless of whether Hillary wins or not, the state of our politics, the state of our government right now, is absolutely at the bottom of the gutter. I don't think there's too many people here in this area that would disagree with me that we need a huge dustpan and a big broom And we need to clean this garbage out. Some people are offended when I associate the word garbage with some politicals back in Washington, D.C., and have asked me not to associate that word with these people, and I tell them, (laughs) 
You say what you want, I'll say what I want. I think that we absolutely have a garbage contingency back on the Potomac, in Congress, in the Senate, and on Pennsylvania Avenue at the White House. Calls are welcome, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Once again, don't forget Ramsey Heating and Electric offering rebates on qualified Lennox home comfort systems. And uh, Ramsey's, along with Lennox, they've been a dealer of Lennox for over 50 years. They know the climate, they know the equipment, and they've done the shopping for you. Call 678-0459 and learn how Ramsey Heating and Electric can save you money on Lennox. I'm surprised, pardon me for the cough again, I'm surprised that we haven't had a lot of people call and uh, make some comments on this. Another thing that really bothers me and I want you to consider is this WikiLeaks situation with the emails. Now, whether you appreciate Julian Assange and what he's doing to release these emails or not, whether you think what he's doing is kind of a bad boy attitude and really not uh, fair, really not uh, balanced, really not kosher, whatever. But if the emails themselves are incriminating, if the emails themselves show beyond a shadow of a doubt a cover-up, then absolutely I think these emails are pertinent for you and I and the American public to understand just how deceiving our government is. Some of the phrases that were in some of the emails that were released, like Obama is a Muslim and they talk about his cocaine past and other things, I mean, wow, there's a lot of stuff in there. And then the comment was made, well, Julian Assange's life probably is in danger. Duh. There have been threats on his life. There have been uh, threats that he had better move into another secure place of hiding. And it really makes you wonder what kind of grave danger this man is in. When you use the terminology, like I heard on another network last night, grave danger, the word grave really has a heavy meaning. Julian Assange might not make it to the election. Calls welcome, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Once again, yours truly goofed. I made a boneheaded mistake on the calendar, and I want to correct that caller. I'll be right there. I said that Lunch Bunch was next week on the 27th. No, no, no. I am so sorry if I caused any problem. It is this week on the 20th. I made the mistake nobody else did. It was purely, I'm sorry. I am so sorry. But anyway, it's going to be this Thursday at Denny's at 1130. Don't miss it. Call her quickly. You're on the air. Didn't we just talk about that? I said, I'm sorry. Leave me alone. Hey, do you remember a few years back when WikiLeaks was leaking stuff about Zeb Bush and the war? And yeah. How the Democrats were holding him to such a high standard, they thought he was the best thing since sliced bread? I do. It's amazing when the shoe gets on the other foot how how things can change. You know, I, I think about this quickly, Doug, and give me a short answer. But if you were Julian Assange this morning, no matter where you are, wherever you're hiding, um, how would you like to get up and trust anybody or whomever is associated with you or coming into your room or bringing you food or whatever? Uh-uh. I think this guy's life is not worth a plugged nickel. Very, very true. But I do admire him for standing for his convictions. His way he received this stuff might not be on the up and up. It might not be good. But I heard an analogy the other day that so some crooks break into your house and they find a dead body. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, is that bad or is it? Who's in trouble? Yeah, and you know, I know where you got that analogy. You got it from the same source that I, I've read a lot of his books, Greg Gutfeld. 
said that. Yeah. And uh, the question remains as to whether he did things in a uh, orthodox manner or an illegality manner. Uh, but I don't care right now. If these are emails and they're legitimate emails written by legitimate people in our government and legitimate people that are trying to run for president, and they show absolutely a heinous attack on America and the rest of us, I want to know what's going on. I got to do a commercial, Doug. Quickly, give me your response. One quick response is he's doing the press's job, and they're upset. Amen. Good way to end it. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. Thank you. Don't forget your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations. Man, these are such nice people, and they're so service-oriented. Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, Daniel on Pole Line, and my buddy Randy on Overland in Burley. Big fall tire sale going on right now. Like for your pickups and SUVs, the Open Country MT. Ooh, look at that tread. Oh, my goodness, get you through the snow, the muck, and the mud. I'll tell you what, and along with that, they've got the best in brake service, professionally trained technicians, and the brake industry's best warranty, front end alignment, shocks and struts, batteries. Batter Don't overlook the value of a good battery. Please stop in and check them out today. Your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Service to you, absolutely number one. Your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Right now, we're going to have this good word for Senator Mike Crapo, and then Wheels will take us up to the news. I'll be back in about seven minutes. Oh, my, my, my. It looks kind of stormy over on the north side of the valley. Really dark over there. Good morning. Good morning, Zeb at the Ranch with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you, and, of course, some of our great advertisers like Western Way Services. From the canyons of the Snake River. Right now, during harvest, just about the time you thought, well, the porta potties, you know, for the reunions and the class reunions and the business picnics, kind of all gone. Oh, here a porta potty, there a porta potty. They've got porta potties going all over, and uh, we certainly appreciate their effort to serve you and me. Western Way Services always at our disposal. Seven three four six nine six nine. Locally owned and operated Western Way Services. You get a hold of them today. By the way, too, don't forget your friends at Ramsey Heating and Electric offering rebates on qualified Lennox home comfort systems. Yep gas furnaces, air conditioners, heat pumps, all of this, and your family will enjoy the comfort. Call 678-0459 and learn how Ramsey Heating and Electric, along with Lennox, can save you money. We're going to have our dear friend Frosty Woldridge on the phone in just a moment. Stand by. Lee Hyder running for re-election for State Senator District 24. The best always stand the test. And that's what Idaho Senator Lee Hyder is, one of the best. And vote 8th, November 8th. For a man that's devoted to Idaho and you. Very, very busy helping to pass several bills up in the Idaho Capitol. Lee Hyder, yes, of course, don't forget he wants your vote on November 8th. Paid for by Lee Hyder for Senate District 24. Right now, we're going to say good morning to a very, very dear friend of mine, and I'm going to ask him in about 10 minutes to give me a little break so I can get one of my other commercial breaks for our politicians on. Good morning, Golden, Colorado, Frosty Woolridge. How are you? Good morning, Zeb, and good morning, everyone in Idaho and across the Northwest and across the country. It's always a pleasure, and I'm looking forward to our chat. Frosty, I'm going to start it off this way. And you and I are the same age. We're kind of brothers linked in arms over many, many subjects. But in all my life, I have never been as unproud of politics in this country as I am right now. I am, I've never felt that we are now being fed garbage 
from the candidates, especially Hillary Clinton, with the illegalities, the money laundering, the innuendos, the absolute cheapening of politics. I'm fed up with this whole thing. What are your thoughts? Well, one of the things that my wife Sandy said just this week uh, that's so frustrating is that the mudslinging has gone to extreme levels uh, that we're left with two choices that are unsavory, and we're watching our country being fragmented by Congress and by the current president, and that the choices are slim to none or bad to worse, and that... In the final analysis, that great shining light that the Founding Fathers created, this constitutional republic, seems to be fading its light uh, with, again, massive and endless immigration coming into our country, both legally and illegally, so much so that we're losing the cohesiveness, uh, the Americanism, uh, the ethos of our country, and To say that we are going to the polls with a positive sense of American ideals, we know right now that if Hillary Clinton is elected, she's going to import hundreds of thousands of Muslims from the Middle East. We know that she's going to have the power to create an amnesty. She will have been voted in so that she gets to give amnesty to... 20, 30 million illegal aliens. She's going to be able to continue the, the, the Obama legacy, uh, which is going to be totally disruptive and destructive of our country. So it is beyond frustrating uh, that we have to uh, choose the least objectionable of the two alternatives for President of the United States at this point in time. And yes, I am exasperated, and I am frustrated, and I am disheartened at what what's happening to our country you know let's talk a little bit about a subject of course where you are the expert i mean i would put you heads and shoulders above anybody else in this nation on immigrants illegal immigrants and refugees and right now i am embittered to the point where i don't have and i've said this many times any more milk of human kindness in my refrigerator it's empty i am sick and tired of having the government say well we're just going to borrow from social security and we're going to give our refugees free housing free education free health care etc and we're going to borrow from social security hey listen frost man i'm 69 years old and i don't want them borrowing from that fund to give away free money to somebody that's not going to pay it back well and also Zeb, the someone who uh, has not earned any of it and one of the things that most americans do not realize is that we're bringing in on average, between 1.5 and 1.7 million immigrants into this country. That's 1.2 million legal every year and 500,000 illegal. And that is an extraordinary number of people that are going on the welfare rolls. And again, as you know, the Congress has never done anything about the misinterpretation of the 14th Amendment so that we're still bringing in... uh, 350,000 illegal alien mothers who are pregnant, and once they drop their jackpot baby, they get the free food, the free housing, they get the free medical, these kids get all the schooling, they get all of the food stamps, they get all of the care, and you and I pay for it. The same thing is happening, as you know, I, I just got back from Detroit, Michigan, <laughs> Dearbornistan, uh, Minneapolis, which is also Minneapolis, stand there at, with the Somaliland. Those folks have no skills. They have no ability to function in a first world country. And so they're all on welfare. And I mean, when I say all, they're all on welfare. And one of the tragedies that the whole immigration stance is by the Congress and by the president and this, you know, the new president that comes in, if it's Hillary Clinton, is the fact that as our country continues to mechanize all of these jobs, And then we keep bringing in 1.5 to 1.7 million unskilled immigrants, the vast 
majority, 90 plus percent, that have no skills, have no ability to function in the first world country, are coming out of these third world countries, they are all, all going on welfare. And that means we simply degrade our paychecks, our lives, our communities with this massive load. And again, we're 20 trillion dollars in debt. Absolutely. That is not being addressed. And there's no way that Hillary Clinton is going to address $20 trillion of debt. In fact, she will grow the debt. And as I've said in the past, the second president of the United States, John Adams, said there are two ways to conquer a nation, by the sword and by debt. And we are long into that path of conquering America by debt. I've got to break in here and have a commercial break, and then we have a caller. Caller, stand by. I'll be with you as quick as I can. Don't go away. I want to remind everybody that Jim Patrick running for re-election for the Republican District 25 senatorial seat. Jim, of course, has served on the Agricultural Commission and the Education and Business Committees. He's also served on the JFAC Committee. This man knows. And he also has a deep understanding of water issues for us here in the state of Idaho. Don't forget to re elect Jim Patrick, Republican for District 25 Senator, paid for by re-elect Patrick for Senate Treasurer Jim Patrick. Once again, I also want to remind you that HJR5, vote yes on HJR5 on November 8th. Your voice needs to be heard, and you should always be able to hold our state government accountable. Vote yes on HJR5. And don't let activist courts take away our legislature's authority to approve Approve or reject agency rules, vote yes on HJR5. Paid for by Speaker Scott Bedke, Representative Fred Wood, and Senator Kelly Anthon. Also, our thanks go out, <coughs> excuse me for the cough, to our dear friend Joel Heward and his staff at Hanson Mortuary, 710 6th Street in Rupert, a place where you, your family, can rest assured that they are always there to help you with the arrangements when one of your loved ones passes away, always with the highest ethical standards, with unquestioned integrity. Please write the number down and call them and talk to them. Visit with them and get the information necessary. 436-5636. Hanson Mortuary, 710 6th Street in Rupert. 436-5636. Caller, quickly, you're on the air. Go ahead, please. Yes, good morning, Frosty. I have a question for you. Uh, why is it that our government... And the FBI will not classify these terrorist training camps and rural uh, training camps that we have scattered throughout the country. Uh, we won't classify them as dangerous organizations. Uh, Scott, uh, go ahead, please, Frosty. Thank you. Yeah, that's the frustrating question of all time. I've done research on these uh, Islamic training terrorist uh, sites uh, from New York uh, through Pennsylvania. Uh, right into Michigan and all the way into Oregon. There's a minimum of 22 of them and, and as, as high as 35 of these Islamic training terrorist camps. What they are and what they do is protected by the Constitution. And so essentially what's happening is that the federal government knows they're there, all of the military knows they're there, and because Congress... And this president, who is a Muslim himself and is a part and parcel of destroying this nation, they will not, uh, again, uh, go, into, go after them because it's on private property. And that is the only understanding or appreciation I know, and that's why they're getting away with that. And when, once they start launching their jihadist attacks on us, then there will be uh, a, the possibility of coming down on them, but they will, of course, done all of the of the, uh, the, the damage as it is. And whether you look at Orlando or the Boston Marathon or you look at the Chattanooga or Fort Hood or San Bernardino or just last week in Boston, uh, one Muslim had a Islamic rebirth and he shot two police officers until there's enough public outcry, which there hasn't been. This Islamic training camps will continue until they launch on us and start killing lots of uh, American citizens. Very good question, caller. Thank you for your time this morning. Frosty, we are living, in my opinion, in the most precarious times ever. 
And uh, quite frankly, after I've been listening about the State Department maybe twisting the arm of the FBI to change some of the classifications of the emails so that it wouldn't be a written or a verbal indictment against Hillary Clinton, I mean... Look at how illegal. And some of the, uh, some of the State Department offices and the FBI that we've hold in, uh, held in high reverence all of our lives, and now they're being dragged down into the gutter because of these illegalities. My goodness, what happened? Well, again, you're, you're talking about the good old boy network that has permeated Congress now for the last 40, 50 years, and you've got so many corrupt congresspersons uh, and congress critters i call them whether it's a john mccain or whether it's a charles schumer or whether it's a boxer or feinstein right on down the line these people you know loretta lynch you you can go right on down the line they're all part and parcel of the corruption that's endemic in washington dc right now there's there's no one in in the in this crime syndicate this cartel in washington dc that's standing up for the Constitution and or certainly uh, standing up for the American people. And, 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 and as long as the American people keep voting them back in, I mean, I was astounded that, that, that what's her name, Kelly, uh, down there in uh, Arizona got beat out again by, uh, you know, by John McCain. Mm-hmm. John McCain's a total failure as, as a senator. He's 80 years old. He's, he's out of the loop of reality, and yet he's, again, money and power and corruption all go together and John McCain's right back into the Congress here for another six-year term. Uh, that's 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 endemic corruption, and that's what's happening in in, in Washington D.C. And we're the ones who become the victims of it because we simply keep voting them back in. You know, Frosty, I know that you are an extremely talented writer, and you and I compare a lot of notes and have a lot of phone calls off the air. But right now, this morning. I dare say that you and I would not like to trade uh, rooms or clothing with Julian Assange. I wouldn't give you a plug nickel for this man's cheery, bright future, would you? Well, you know, Assange and and certainly Snowden, I I would recommend everyone see the movie Snowden, but also read all of the, the reports. Probably Snowden, in the end, ought to be given a Congressional Medal of Honor. Uh, the, the corruption, it, there's so few whistleblowers have the gumption or the guts or the true grit to really expose what's going on, and Snowden and Assange have. And there's no question, there, there's, there's some folks out to, to take them out. So that's the reality we're facing, and that's what those two men are facing for, uh, really standing up and really leaking the reality of a... Hillary Clinton. Uh, there's also a movie about Hillary's America. Yes. I'd invite everybody to go watch that movie. It really shows what a scoundrel, what a duplicity. And there's a, it's the word called witch, and I don't want to use it, but Hillary Clinton defines that that word witch. And, and we're about to suffer a four-year term of this woman from what the polls are saying. It is scary beyond understanding. Absolutely. We... But the American people are to vote for Hillary Clinton. Absolutely. We have time for one more caller. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Go ahead quickly. Yes, Frosty. Uh, well, she's very depraved, uh, black-hearted, godless. This is the thing. If she wins and we're back where we were, and you say we never got any help from the Republicans, we got McConnell, majority, and then you've got Ryan, and neither one of them show any signs of spying and then they just left leave us out here to drift in the wind and you just you're so furious you just don't know where to turn we just the people have got to change this but do enough of them care thanks Uh, you know he brings up a very impassioned plea for people to wake up and smell the coffee your response frosty please well, his frustration, your frustration, are my frustrations, and everybody listening across the country. The frustrations are running deep, they're wide, and, and, and they're, they're literally helpless and hopeless in this, what's happening to us as a country. And I can guarantee you this, if Hillary Clinton, I'm working on a piece right now, if Hillary wins, you can expect this. That's going to be the title. And also, if you go to newswithviews.com today, you'll see 
see my fourth part of my series on uh, the the uh, the deadliest uh, you know the deadliest birth rate for all humanity, and we are the recipient nation along with Canada and along with Europe and Australia, and we are simply going to get overrun by all forms of immigration because again the third world has 80 million new babies net gain every year and hillary is going to be bringing them into this country at breakneck speed that will literally shred our communities i already know what's happening with the small amount of muslims that are already in idaho i read all the reports and we're all facing this and 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 it is it, it is a situation where Again, the voting public, the ones that vote for Hillary, they do not understand their plight and what will become of them. And they're, if you could just go to Minneapolis, Maine, St. Paul right now, like I did last week, and see the new Somaliland, a whole new country within a country, and you go to Detroit, Michigan, a whole new society within our society that has nothing to do with our society, except it's leeching off us with its welfare recipients, the Somalis, you name it. It's unbelievable to see what's happening. And if Hillary gets into the White House, it's going to accelerate even faster. I asked you this last week, but give me a short, quick synopsis. What were your feelings when you went to Dearborn, Michigan, explicitly? I mean, what did you feel? Did you feel uh, an anger? Did you feel a fear? Were you afraid for your safety? Did you learn something about these people that you didn't know? Did you find out about the encroachment? I mean, what was your biggest concern when you were back there? total and complete helplessness as to what these the Congress is engineering to absolutely fracture and fragment our society into enclaves of foreigners who have no comprehension of the Constitution, have no love of the flag, have you don't. You go to Dearborn, Michigan, and Somaliland. You do not see American flags. You don't see Old Glory. You do not see any kind of assimilation whatsoever. You see people, women who are no longer. They're not. They're not have any personality. They have no. They have no choices. They have no ability to do anything. They're Muslims, and they're totally subjected to their husbands. So, you know, domination. I mean, it's unbelievable to see that in my own country where women have no choices because Muslims don't give women choices. And that's what's happening in Detroit, Michigan. That's what's happening in Somaliland there in Minneapolis, uh, St. Paul. And it's just, it's sickening on a level. I don't even know how to, it's it, a gut level sickening feeling to see my own country being handed over to people who absolutely hate this country. And that's Muslims, period. And they're here for only one reason, to convert or kill all non-believers and turn America into a Muslim Islamic state. That is the final prime directive of Islam in America, period. Frosty, I've got so many other questions. Unfortunately, we're dictated to by the clock on the wall. The best to you, your lovely wife. Thank you for taking the time to be on our program. I will look forward to next Tuesday. Frosty Woldridge in Golden, Colorado, thank you so much. God bless it. Thank you very much. Dear friend, absolutely one of the best friends I've ever had, Frosty Woldridge. I appreciate him. Don't forget Scott Bedke, State Representative and Speaker of the House, District 27, Position A. Speaker of the House Scott Bedke urges you to go vote in the election November 8th. Don't forget, very concerned for Idaho and its growth and prosperity. And he's concerned about the future of the United States of America. And he wants you to vote yes on HJR5. Don't forget to take your picture ID when you go to the polls, paid for by Representative Scott Bedke of of Oakley. Thank you very much. Also, our thanks go out to our dear friends at Lee's Furniture, Floors, and more. My goodness sakes, they're extending for quite a period of time the Columbus Day sale. Oh, my goodness, no money down, no interest, and 12 months to pay on approved credit. Wow! And they've got the king mattresses for the price of a queen. The queen mattresses for the price of a full. You better get in there for a good night's sleep. Mmm! 
along with all the mattresses, all the bedroom sets. They've got all the uh, dining room sets, all the great, great recliners, all of this and more. At Lee's Furniture Floors and more. 459 Overland in Burley. You stop in and see those really, really nice people today. Hey, there's a great auction coming up, and I want to say that uh, Roggy Auction Company, man, these guys are good. Roggy Auctions, of course, and uh, you can go to their website, RoggyAuctions.com. Ron Roggy, Cade Roggy, Jed South, and the big CD Ranches sale is coming up at 259 South Meridian Road in Rupert, and it's going to be October 22nd at 11 a.m. Excellent farm equipment, livestock equipment, horse tack, guns, vehicles, collectibles, excess horse trailers, sheep camps, so much more. Be there October 22nd and the sale time 11 a.m. Roggy Auctions managing the CD Ranches sale. Don't you miss it. In just a moment, we're going to have our next guest. We're going to kind of slow things down a little bit and uh, talk about a completely non-political story related. Uh, We're going to be visiting with Tony McCammon, known as the Master Gardener, so stand by for that. Don't forget, too, Cameron and Siemens Insurance. Mm Mm-hmm. Great people serving you, the professionals in life insurance, health insurance, retirement planning, employee benefits, and they are there to serve you. All you have to do is pick up that phone and make an appointment at 436-4424. That number again, 436-4424. Cameron and Siemens Insurance in Rupert on Highway 24, absolutely the best in serving you. Also, don't forget to let's ride. Oh, yeah, I got to talk about my friends at 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the world. My goodness, with the best of snowmobiles. Yep, that's right. The snow is coming. And be ready with your brand new snowmobile from Let's Ride. They got the new snowmobiles like the new Maverick X3. Or I should say, (laughs) I goofed. My bad. New snowmobiles are coming to the store every day. And they've also got the new Maverick X3 side by side. You just have to buy one. The perfect gift for you. Get in there and check them out. All of this and more at Let's Ride. Yep, all the accessories. Great service department for you at Let's Let's ride 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the world where the fun is sold. Absolutely the best. Right now we're going to find out about fall gardening, if there is such a thing, or what to do in the fall with the mulching leaves and everything and and putting your landscapes to bed for the winter. Nighty night, here comes the master gardener, Tony McCammon. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning. Thanks for having me on, Zeb. What in the world? I thought everything was croaking and dead and we don't have to worry about anything. And you're saying it's just the opposite. We've got a lot of work to do. Well, it, it, it is interesting. There's a lot of people that, uh, they're, they're tired. They're, I'm done with my garden. Look at it. It looks, looks horrid. And so a lot of people are kind of, uh, kind of finishing up. They're pulling off their, their last tomatoes, um, trying to ripen them up and, uh, and kind of, kind of, being done, I'm 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 done, right? Yeah. But there's still a lot a lot that needs to be done before uh, we put our shovels away for the winter. Oh come on, Tony! I thought I could just go ahead and put a red ribbon around that shovel and send it someplace. I didn't want to touch it again. But what kind of stuff do we need to do? Well, if your sho- if your shovel's still red, Zeb, then you didn't use it enough this summer. Um, you know, some of the things it's. Truly, uh, just taking care of your equipment—that uh, that would be—that would be definitely high on my priority list. Uh, if if I needed to uh, fix any sprinklers, it's a lot easier to do it now um, than to do it early spring uh, when you might hit some rains. I, obviously, we're hitting rains right now, but it is supposed to warm up here in a, uh, next week a little bit. And uh, so, so if you if you wanted to add a add a sprinkler in somewhere or fix a couple sprinklers before you put it to bed, that's that's not a bad not a bad idea. Um, also, a lot of a lot of pruning needs to happen uh, for a lot of your herbaceous herbaceous uh, plants, um, and then some of your some of your plants that that uh, flower in the summer. Uh, now would not be a bad time to you know cut some of those back a little bit. So a little bit of cleanup. Um, uh, those those things work really well. And then and then with the leaves uh, and the mowing and the aerating and your lawns, those are. That's a, that's a big job that usually is best done in the fall. 
Okay. Now I got a question for you, Mr. Master Gardener. Um, how long, and I'm not trying to be facetious when I say this, how long should we leave a lawn during the winter for the grass to get a good start again next spring? Um, oh, oh, you mean mowing height? Y- yeah, so yeah. How long should I leave my mowing height? Right. You want to leave it exactly where you've left it all summer. Do not cut. Do not. Do not scalp your lawn right before fall because it's easier to blow off the leaves. Um, this type of stuff will increase your thatch layer, and that is a layer. Uh, it's a layer of dead roots and um, leaves and other things that uh, insects like to hibernate in, and and they can cause havoc next year in your lawn. Okay. Now so, when. Uh, yeah, you want to you want to leave your leave your lawn the same height that you've left it all all summer, um, in that two and a half to three three inch uh, area. Uh, that'll that'll give you a good uh, base for next year, and uh, you'll it'll take a little bit extra work to, to you know to rake up the leaves and, and those type of things. And and that's another thing I want to talk about if if you don't mind, Zeb. Um, with your leaves, a lot of people rake them up and then throw them away and. And I just think that's a complete waste of, uh, first of all, energy, but it's a, it's a waste of uh, a lot of good material. Um, those leaves are packed full of phosphorus and, and iron and zinc and ma- manganese and, and molybdenum and all sorts of uh, really good elements, uh, micronutrients and, and, uh, and micronutrients that our lawns and our soils and uh, the biology of our soils uh, could really use. Are you telling me that leaving the... Deanna, I want you to be listening to this. Are you telling me that we should leave the leaves on the lawn? Yes, absolutely. I um, I recommend mowing them up. Now, you don't want to leave a bunch of layers of leaves on on the lawn for obvious reasons. It's going to suffocate the lawn by the, by the time spring comes around. Uh, but mowing them up, chopping them up, uh, you could even bag them uh, as your as your mower is going over them, and use those as a mulch in your in your garden to put your uh, your vegetable garden to rest. And then next next spring, uh, really early, you're going to till that in, and that adds a a lot of a lot of nutrients and a lot of tilth um, into your garden bed. So. Uh, those are some good things. If you leave them on your lawn, then it just breaks down and, and, and creates kind of organic matter, which is really hard to get sometimes into your lawn. So uh, over the winter, it's going to break down and create uh, some good tilth in your lawn as well. So in essence, what you're saying is leave the leaves on the lawn, and by spring, hopefully the wind will blow them over to the neighbors anyway. <laughs> Yeah, that that sometimes happens. We you guys get a lot of wind. We we get a lot of wind in the Magic Valley, and so um, that that is that is a problem. But if you mow them up and you and you get them fine enough, they don't blow. You know, even if they blew away, uh, they're, they're not going to cause a lot of a lot of a lot of grief. Uh, the main thing is that it, it falls down in in between the grass blades of your lawn, and uh, and and then the insects and other microbes will start breaking those down and and. Um, releasing a lot of those nutrients that I was talking about. Is the fall of the year a good time or not a good time for people perhaps to start thinking about maybe changing some of the landscaping of their place, uh, that type of thing, or is it better left till the spring? Oh, no, I think uh, the fall is the best time. If you wanted to increase, uh, you know, to create a bed, um, you know, this is a really good time to start digging those areas out. Uh, removing the removing the grass and uh, and changing things up a little bit. It's a good time to move some sprinklers uh, because the grass isn't so dependent on us watering it at this time of year. Uh, obviously, we're getting plenty of precipitation, so hopefully, you've already uh, maybe winterized or at least turned off your sprinkler systems. Um, so yeah, it's a uh, it's a good time to to start looking at your landscape a little bit differently. What do we want to change up? Uh, what do we want to renovate and maybe some some create some new uh, new landscape areas? Okay, now you are the University of Idaho horticulturist, and you have what's called with the University of Idaho a Master Gardener program. What is that? Do I get a big plaque on the wall? Do you give me a a cap and a gown, and I walk through a garden and get a diploma? What happens here? 
Pretty much. You know, I, I, I get uh, my, my Master Gardeners do wear a, a lime green T-shirt, uh, <laughs> which I, I say it's kind of the ugly shirt, but it's, it's definitely visible. And then once they graduate, they, they graduate to a blue shirt. And, uh, and yeah, we, we, we kind of have a cap and gown ceremony in December. I have 112 Master Gardeners throughout the Magic Valley. And uh, that program's been run in, in Idaho since 1976. So it is 40 years old uh, of, as of this year. And uh, we have Master Gardeners throughout the state. Uh, more, than, more than 20 programs are run each year in the state. Um, I run three programs myself here in the Magic Valley. Uh, we'll have a we'll have a, a program in uh, Haley this year. We'll have a program in Rupert, and we'll have a program here in Twin Falls. And uh, and so yeah, we're 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 gearing up for that. I, I've started marketing for that program. Uh, that'll start up. <clears throat> excuse me. That'll start up the the beginning of January. Okay. Now, what do you learn to be a master gardener? I mean, everybody gathers in the classroom, and they're all uh, they got nice new clothes on the first day of school with Tony, the master gardener, and boy, you got a ruler to slap their knuckles if they don't pay attention. What do they learn? <laughs> oh, I don't know about slapping any knuckles, but uh, we have a we have a really good time. Uh, it's just a great group of you know gardeners are some of the happiest people on earth, and. Uh, and it also it's amazing to me as I as I see the people in my class. You know, it really keeps people young. Uh, some of these some of these people are just sprite and lots of energy, and and most of them are retired. So uh, it's it's just a lot of fun to to hang out with these guys, and uh, and we do a lot of great projects. I, I know the the master gardeners down in the Minicash area have have really put a lot of effort into that uh, Oregon Trail rest stop. Um, uh, there in Burley and uh, uh, along the River Rock there, uh, R- River Walk there, and uh, they they're just gung ho and lots of energy and uh, they do good work. They do good uh, community projects throughout the summer, and then we do all of our learning, all of our studying through the winter, and and kind of prepare what we want to work on this this next year. So we we cover all aspects of horticulture, uh, whether that's entomology. Or disease management, uh, greenhouse greenhouse management. Uh, we talk about propagation and how to get plants for free, and uh, just a lot of little tidbits and things that uh, most gardeners, even if they've gardened most of their lives, have never really thought of. And uh, changing 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 mindsets and really making gardeners even better gardeners. Making them master gardeners. Okay, now uh, I'm assuming that uh, you're going to have classes available uh, for all ends of the valley. Is that correct? What about the East End and the Twin Falls area? Yeah, we'll have a, a class here in Twin Falls, and we'll have a class there in Rupert at the extension office there on the fairgrounds. And uh, uh, yeah, they'll all start up uh, their their Wednesday uh, Wednesday classes. Uh, they they run three hours each Wednesday. And uh, and it goes for about twelve weeks. Wow! And what kind of a cost is there to become a student to be a master gardener? It's around it's around three hundred dollars. Um, that that covers the cost of uh, of most of the supplies, and and there's also a book that can be ordered, and uh, and then that that'll cover cost of travel for a lot of my speakers. It isn't just me that's uh, presenting. That could get kind of boring, I imagine. Um, but I do bring in specialists from all over the state. Uh, Wayne Jones from up in uh, up in eastern Idaho. He'll come down and talk about pathology. He's a pathologist. Um, I have a great greenhouse specialist out of uh, the Washington County area, over on the, the um, western portion of the state. And so anyway, I bring in specialists that uh, know a little bit more about some of the stuff than I do, and. Uh, and it's just a, a well-rounded. Uh, if, if you could go back into college and take a, a horticulture class, a basic horticulture 101 class, that's basically what the Master Gardener program is. It's uh, it's kind of a, a culmination of everything horticulture. Do you grade their papers? Do you make them write uh, different theses about what they're talking and learning about? Uh, tell us a little bit about what do you expect from the students. Well, Zeb, you're going to scare away all my students. Uh, (laughs) 
No, we uh, we we do. We I, I give some, and it's not required homework, but I do give some some quizzes just to help them continue their education outside of the classroom, uh, just to to test their knowledge of what they learned in class and what they received uh, for the information from the from the the handbook. Uh, and then the, yeah, there is a final exam that must that that they must get a seventy percent or greater on. Uh, when I said this is kind of like a, a college course, uh, you better believe it. it. It is very much a college course, uh, but it is it is a lot of fun. You meet some, some lifelong friends in this class, and, uh, and and we have some great tours through the summer, and we get together and we do different things, and we have a great banquet to celebrate those that that certified as master gardeners. So I, I provide forty hours of in class training. That's the goal of the, the, the winter portion of the class. And then uh, in order to become certified as a Master Gardener, uh, those that uh, completed the, the curriculum in class will then take their knowledge to the community, and they'll do 40 hours of out-of-class practicum where they'll, uh, they'll work with the community and find projects, find, find some needs in horticulture that they can, they can possibly teach or serve, um, and then they also continue to learn through the summer as well with some of the classes and, and uh, state programs. We have an international Master Gardener program uh, conference coming up in uh, Portland this summer. We also have one that uh, it's a state to regional uh, Master Gardener conference that happens every year up in Rexburg. And so there's lots of stuff that they, they'll be able to do through the summer um, to continue their learning. Do you, like, rent a Boeing 747 and paint Master Gardener on the side of it and then fly everybody up there from Boise to Portland, or what do you do? Uh, there, well, like I said, these are all, there's a lot of good friends, and so they'll, they'll, they'll put together caravans uh, between the, asso- the associations. We have two Master Gardener associations, which is kind of like having a, a bunch of really smart uh, gardeners that, that meet once a month and and they come up with projects that would that would benefit the community. So we have an association there in the Minicash area, and they, they usually will put together tours, and they'll do some type of caravan, and we'll have a Master Gardener Association up here in Twin that'll do the same. And uh, they'll find their, find their way to Portland, and I'll be teaching there in Portland um, as well as I'm on the committee of, of organizing that, that, uh, that program. Okay, now tell me a little bit about you, Tony McCammon. I mean, you sound like a young guy. You sound like you really got a lot of vibrancy and enthusiasm. How did you get started uh, with uh, gardens and dead weeds and everything else? How did you get started doing this? Uh, well, you know, I, I actually grew up in Seattle, Washington, and uh, my my mom uh, was a slave driver, and she made me get out in the yard and work. And uh, I had to work for my meals, and no, I, I, she was beautiful and she was awesome, and and but but she she helped me learn the the art and the love of gardening, and uh, so I went to I went to school in landscape construction and maintenance. And uh, that, that seemed like a good fit. I got to do a little bit of design. I got to do some, some really interesting things. But when they started asking me to grade a parking lot, I thought, I don't think I want to grade parking lots the rest of my life. <laughs> and so I, uh, I switched over to horticulture and, uh, and did a little bit more with the plants and really started to love plants. And it was really interesting. I never, never was a great student. I wasn't an A student. But when I started taking a class on um, woody plants, uh, it was like I just uh, met a bunch of new friends. And really? I was able to memorize the craziest names, the Latin names of all these plants uh, with ease. And from then on, it was just one thing after another. Um, and just, just per chance, I was in this class, and this lady was talking about turf grass and about water conservation. And uh, really interesting, I, I, I just had this feeling I needed to go ask her if she had any, any positions for graduate students. And I did, and she said, sure enough, I, I, I just got a grant, and I am looking for one. And so I ended up into grad school, and that, was a, that just blew me away. I never thought I'd go to grad school. And uh, I got my degree, my master's degree in water conservation, which meant that there was no chance I was ever going to get a job in Seattle. <laughs> so I ended up here in the West, and uh, and that's okay. I, I really love it here in Idaho. I, I'm, 
I consider myself an Idahoan at this point. Um, been here for over 10 years. Okay, quickly, we've got a call for you, Tony. Go ahead, caller. I've got limited time. Go ahead, you're on the air. Yeah, I would like to know what Tony does to make a living. I know this is important to him, but what does he do to feed his family? Okay, Tony, I'll let you answer the question. It's a burning question by my listeners. What the heck do you do to earn a paycheck? <laughs> well, this is uh, this is one of the best jobs in the world. I get to serve people. Um, so I work for the University of Idaho. I'm a faculty for the University of Idaho. I work out of the Extension Office in Twin Falls County. Um, they pay my paychecks. It's a it's a land grant university, so a lot of the grant funds that come to pay my paychecks actually comes from your tax dollars. Uh, so I am considered a government slash state employee because we get grant funding from both state and government. And uh, then the county houses us and supports us with uh, um, secretaries and support staff. I got to ask you this question for all the people. But uh, what do I do for my living? Well, I, I'm, a, I'm a community educator. I educate people. I educate youth. And I get to teach classes, which is just fabulous and then uh once a year i uh, for my research i i go up with some of my colleagues and we this last year we were up in the frank church wilderness looking for native plants we do a domestication pro uh, program project where we collect native plants and seed and then uh, grow them out in aberdeen idaho and then test them to see if they uh they maintain some 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 relatively nice characteristics that we can possibly uh, sell in a, in a nursery type setting so we can support the, the local nurseries with native plants that will be you know more water water tolerant uh, drought sorry drought, drought tolerant and maintain some really pretty uh, characteristics all right um, a lot of those plants are actually sold right here in the valley at the uh, uh, native roots out in filer and we have a memorandum of understanding with them that most of our most of our plant stock that we test out goes to them first. Okay. okay. Last so, question. I mean, it's a great job. I, I get to I get to go on backpacking trips and and go up into the mountains. Uh, I get to um, work with my community. A, a lot of a lot of insects that uh, you know are kind of new to the area. They show up first in my office, and then I get to alert the Department of Agriculture and. We have a, a close relationship with them, and so that's that's kind of my job description, uh, kind of in a nutshell. But it, it's a lot of teaching, and and I, I love to do that, and uh, get to work with my community. All right, last question: Do you ha- are you married? Have a family? Are you a single guy that just stays all night looking at dead grass, or what do you do? Yeah, Zeb, I have to laugh because you said I, I kind of a young guy. Well. I, 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 I guess I'm a young relative maybe to you, Zeb, but uh, I'm 40 years old. I have a, a wife and three kids. My oldest is 16, and we're going through the teenage years of uh, trying to figure out dating and curfew and a uh, pretty normal guy other than that. Bless you, my child. Bless you. You're in a state right now that you will grow out of, I promise you. Anyway, Tony McCammon, God bless you, the master gardener, and uh, I really appreciate you coming on, and you take a little bit of jabbing, but you're a good guy. Tony, I appreciate it. (laughs) I so appreciate you having me on, Zeb. All right, God bless, sir. Thank you very, very much. The Master Gardener, Tony McCammon, and the program through the University of Idaho. If you want more information, I've got it here, or you can call the University of Idaho, 734-9590 in Twin Falls, as I almost knocked over the microphone. Hey, it's time for the weather, and the weather is brought to you this hour by Pope Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, and Company, CPAs. These are very knowledgeable and very helping people. People to you. Curtis Pope, Todd Phillips, Rob Oaks, Mitch Goodwin, Lydon Crane. Don't miss an opportunity to work with the best on your tax return preparation. Give them a call. They've got two offices, 1710 Overland in Burley, 878-7000, and 625th Street in Rupert, 436-5607. Pope Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, and Company, CPAs, serving you. And right now, here's Gina with the weather. It's going to be cloudy and windy today for this Tuesday. No big surprise, as it is mid-October. Winds out of the west right around 25 miles... 
Winds out of the west right around 20 miles an hour for today. High of 49 is what we're looking at tonight. Low of 32. Tomorrow, everything is going to be calming down. Sunny skies, high of 53. Overnight, low of 31. For Thursday, partly cloudy skies, high of 60. Overnight, low of 35. And it's going to be nice as we kick off the weekend. Sunny skies, high of 65. Yesterday's high was 53. The overnight low was 38. That is your weather for Zebeth Ranch. Ah, uh, Gina, thank you very much. Brought to you by some people you get to, you need to get to know really quick because it's getting close to the end of the year. And if you have questions, get a hold of the best for your taxes. Pope Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin & Company, and they are there to serve you. They've been serving the Minicash area for well over 50 years. Call them today with offices in Burley and Rupert. Oh, my goodness. Um, I want to remind you, too, the Senior Junction Pumpkin Function. Now, I, I'm going to take just a little bit of time and lay this out for you. It's going to be frightfully wonderful. October 27th, and that is a Thursday, a week from this Thursday, the 27th, a remote broadcast. I'm going to be over there from 8 to 11, but it's going to start earlier than that in the Witch's Den. They're going to have a huge, ghoulishly delicious breakfast starting at 7 o'clock in the morning. They're going to have costume contests. Stop in with your costume. You can win some absolutely frightfully wonderful prizes. They're going to be selling creep candy for for Halloween. They're going to be selling t-shirts commemorating the Senior Junction Pumpkin Function and all the net proceeds go to the Meals on Wheels. <laughs> it's going to be great. Senior Pumpkin... Oh. Messed it up. Senior Junction Pumpkin Function, October 27th, and you want to be sure and be there. Let's see, what else have I got? Dr. History's coming through the door. Hey, by the way, Lunch Bunch, this Thursday, I goofed. I had said the wrong date. It's going to be this Thursday, day after tomorrow, at Denny's Restaurant, America's Diner. Our thanks also to Smith's Food, Handsome Mortuary, Walmart, Stokes Groceries for all their support for our door prices. Holy smokes, don't miss it. This Thursday, and that will be Zeb's Lunch Bunch at America's Diner, Denny's Restaurant, 611 Overland in Burley. Right now, we're going to have this good word for Senator Mike Crapo and followed by Wheels taking us up to news from CBS. Oh, my, my, my. Here we are in the third hour. Kind of a Charlie Russell sky out there. He used to paint a lot of cloud scenes and everything. Really dark on the north side. Not so bad right here. Good morning, Zeb at the Ranch. I'm Zeb Bell. And, of course, our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you. And along with some of our great advertisers like Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Call them today at 734 by the way, too, we want to remind you, your District 25B representative, Clark Kaufman, has served on the Revenue and Taxation Committee, Transportation and Defense Committee, and the Business Committee. And he asked for your vote again on November 8th. And that, of course, is re-elect Clark Kaufman for District 25B. Paid for by the committee to elect Clark Kaufman, Debbie Kaufman, Treasurer. And, too, don't forget what's going on over at Lee's Furniture Floors and more. My goodness, you can get a king-size mattress for the price of a queen and a queen-size mattress for the price of a full. Wow! And just really save money and enjoy sleeping comfort. Along with the bedroom sets and the dining room sets and the recliners, all of this and more with really, really nice people. Lee's Furniture, Floors and More, 459 Overland in Burley. Really nice folks to work with. And you know, when we talk about nice folks to work with, I got to tell you, this is the cutest idea. Howl Halloween. What is Howl Halloween? Well, it's Four Paws annual party and pet parade for Halloween. Saturday, October 29th, and they're going to have uh, all the pet costumes on sale through Halloween and parade judging at 1 p.m. on that day, the 29th. Free pictures, free refreshments. Oh, my goodness. Dress up your doggy and kitty cat and let them go over to the Halloween at Four Paws Bed and Bath, two, 370 West. 
200 south of Rupert. Number to call, 438-4444. There you go. It is time for Dr. History, brought to you by Minicasha Sales, 1321 East Main Street in Burley. Old Zach and the crew over there with all your windows, your lumber, etc. These people are great, and they can help you. Minicasha Sales in Burley. And right now, here's my buddy, Dr. History. Good morning, Zeb. How you doing? Fantastic. <laughs> nice day out there, sort of. Oh, yeah. But, you know, you I know, like cloudy days. You know, it's nice. I the do. sugar beets are coming out, and I think it's been a great harvest this year. Oh, yeah. And, you know, soon it will be all over. Soon we'll be sitting on our front porch watching nothing but the birds fly by and a lot of leaves. <laughs> and snow. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Hey, what are we going to talk about this morning? All right. Uh, we're going to talk about a man, a uh, or men. These guys were trappers and mountain men. Okay. And they are referred to as a squaw man. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, Squaw Man? Why, my goodness sakes, we'll have some of these eastern colleges calling us and saying, why, you can't use that word. It's not politically correct. And and I came prepared. Historically, the word squaw came from the Algonquin Indians, and it meant woman or young woman. Uh, The word squaw that the English settlers used uh, in Massachusetts back in the 1600s just meant Indian woman. And... uh, even Indian uh, people that spoke English also used the word squaw rather than woman. Yeah. So it is not a derogatory term in the time period we're talking about. Absolutely. And you know what? It shouldn't be today either. It really I, we're not going to be PC on this program, politically correct, nor do I want to be. And if somebody's offended, oh, poor baby. <laughs> well, we're going to use the terminology, which I, we have always done, of the time period. So go. we're talking a couple of hundred years ago. There and this is, so here we go. All right. So the squaw man was actually kind of the aristocrat of the early trapping days. Mm-hmm. In most cases, he was a free trapper, which which meant making his own selection as to where he was going to go. He sold his furs to whoever he wanted to. And as a rule, actually I didn't know this, but he drank less of the fire water at the trapping company trading post than did the trapper employed by the year. Really? Now, that's an interesting thought. Yeah. He also lived at best kind of a kind of a crude domestic life, and it was actually more thrifty, usually, than the other trappers. So he was really more of a, I don't know if you want to say an entrepreneur or more careful with, uh, with what he did. So the wife, as a companion, the Indian wife, uh, adjusted herself to the natural inclinations of her man. As most Indian wives uh, who lived with the white men, they took great interest in pleasing their husband. If he was a clean, tidy fellow, she adjusted herself to that. And I guess the other way, too. <laughs> you left the door open I did, on that I one. did. But, you know, it was her duty to do all the work around the camp, not only cooking, but securing the wood, yep. tanning the hides, making moccasins, and the other wearing apparel, which is still basically what they did uh, in the tribe. And see, my father continued on that trend of tanning hides when he whooped me when I did something <laughs> wrong. But that's another uh, <laughs> another uh, take on that, yeah, yes, and yeah, I can yeah. relate to that. Yeah. But anyway, in the spring, she would hunt out wild fruits and berries and, again, just did uh, what she would have done had she been uh, in an Indian tribe. So anyway, most squaw men were good to their women and lived quite a domestic carefree life. If he was trapping a stream that could be trapped for more than one season, he usually built a cabin with a fireplace, but his wife invariably lived in a teepee made of hides, which was her kind of her sacred abode. No, wait a minute. She lived apart from her husband? Well, so sort of. You know, you can imagine that sort of. the cabin probably was very small, Yeah, and she had been raised living in a teepee. Yeah, so if the old boy hadn't taken a bath for three months, maybe it was a good thing to do. He would stay. Now, most squaw men were French or Canadian French, and sometimes they were also called Cayuse French, uh, Or uh, although there were other nationalities that also took Indian wives for themselves. But it seemed for some reason that the French and the Indian natures were better adapted to each other. So really? for some reason, the French had more uh, Indian wives than uh, than the other remember nationality. Remember the movie Centennial? You know, I do not it, remember you know, that. that. That was that seven-part series about how the West was won, you know, around Centennial, okay. Colorado, and okay. everything. Yeah. It started with a French fur trapper. 
Okay. Yeah. Well, and, and there's a lot of stories about that, and we're going to get into some of that. But, you know, it was not always that the Squaw Man was taken as a brother in the tribe or was immune from the dangers of the uncertain and treacherous Indians. I mean, just because he had an Indian wife sure. didn't make him totally safe. And there were a number of them that got scalped, and uh, and the Squaw Men were left uh, were for their bones to bleach in the sun. And the Indian wife, a lot of times very upset, brokenhearted, would return to the tribe. And it's also reported that it was rare that a man deserted his his Indian wife. Yeah. So the the Indian women uh, that did become wives seemed to be very uh, uh, attached to their husband eventually, and so did she. The squaw ever do some of the potential scalping? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I suppose if you didn't treat her right, you'd want to yeah, sleep pretty lightly. That's why that extra room outside the house was <laughs> very right. beneficial. Well, this might be a good spot for break, Zeb. I think it was permanently or for, just just for a, for a short time. Okay, there we go. And of course, Doctor History brought to you by our dear friends at Minicasha Sales, 1321 East Main Street in Burley. Zach and the rest of the crew, they want to remind you about upgrading your windows with the Western Windows. Winter is coming. Oh, no. And they can help send over to the contractors to get the installation complete. Minicasha Sales, oh, my goodness, they can help you. Stop in and see them today, 1321 East Main Street in Burley, right across from the airport, sponsoring Dr. History. Also want to remind you about our dear friend Jim Patrick running for re-election for the Republican District 25 senatorial seat. Deep, deep understanding of water issues. He's had a personal history long time on the salmon track, and he knows that we need to solve the water problems in the area without massive disruptions of our economy. This man knows. Please, re-elect Republican for District 25 Senator Jim Patrick, paid for by the re-elect Patrick for Senate Treasurer Jim Patrick. And now, without further ado, because I lost my other commercial Here's Dr. History. <laughs> okay. Well, okay, I'm going to talk about a guy named John Graves. Now, this guy was an early day trapper, guide, a scout, and he had trapped in this region where we're at here in the early 60s and had scouting experience under General Miles, General Howard, and in fact, all of the Indian War since that period tells, he tells of an interesting story that happened right outside here, Zeb, right where we live. Really? He and two other trappers, one a squaw man by the name of Laprie, who had his Indian wife with him, making a party of four. Okay? They left the upper Snake River country en route to, he calls it the Little Woody uh, River, which we, we, we call the Little Wood. Yeah, well, they just forgot the why. The why. So... Anyway, with the intention of trapping that stream during the winter. Now, after they left Fort Hall, um, they encountered bad weather, and when they reached the Little Wood, or Little Woody, they found a small train of, of wagon train consisting of 10 or 12 wagons of immigrants, and they were snowbound. Really? Now, this was about the 1st of whoa, November. Whoa, whoa. They're on the river, and the other wagon train on the shore is snowbound. They're up there by uh, towards uh, Ketchum Snow uh, oh, that direction. Can you imagine paddling a canoe in that kind of weather? No, well, thank no, you. No, they weren't on the river. Oh. They were going by uh, the wagon. Okay, uh, John Graves and the three others. They were going up into that area to trap. I see. So the wagon train okay. had taken a shortcut supposedly from <laughs> Fort Hall uh -huh. to Boise. Don't want to do that. So anyway, as I said, they found the wagon train snowbound. It was the first of November. The snow was several feet deep, and which you know we're getting close to that. But the immigrants were bound for Oregon and had been persuaded to cross the Snake River somewhere about Fort Hall, and they abandoned the Oregon Trail to take a route to the north. Uh -huh. So uh, you know where this is going. Oh boy. But at the best this was not feasible. They had been camped on the little woody for several days before the Graves' party arrived, thinking that the snow would melt sufficiently for their travel. Yeah. Now, this is the 1st of November. Uh, who told them the snow would yeah. melt? Well, yeah, that's a good question. So Graves informed them that the snow had come for good, yeah. and the roads to the west would be blocked for the rest of the winter. Check your calendar. Yeah. Anyway, the trappers knew that something would have to be done for the immigrants. They could not exist through the winter, uh, where the, uh, the weather at this point. The snow would be too deep to secure game. And we know this, Zeb, all the deer had been driven by the storms into the valleys below, and their stock would have to be taken lower down to get forage to be able yeah, to eat. Yeah, really. So there was not even a well-marked trail leading south through the rough lava, even if they said, okay, you guys head south. 
Yeah. They they would have been in bad bad trouble. So the squaw man. Couldn't they have taken the cutoff road to Rupert? <laughs> they should have. <laughs> you know, the squaw man, LaPree, had trapped Little Wood River and the Malad two years before, and he suggested that a desperate effort be made to take the train down on the east side of the Little Woody River through the rough lava until the more open country Ooh. of the valley below was reached. Wow. Now, this was decided and the time of action was at hand. No time was to be lost. So the trappers quickly established the camp. Lepree left his wife to take care of the of the camp, and the immigrant train was headed south into the lava. Now, you've been out there, Zeb. That's, That's bad stuff. Yeah. Uh, so the trip was slow. How could they possibly get across those lava beds? Well, I'm thinking that the, the guides, these trappers, had to know a little bit of the area because there's no way you can take a wagon over some of that lava. No, I mean, so, how in the world? They must have skirted it somehow. Yeah, they did. But they made only a few miles the first day or two. They had snow that kept coming. Uh, again, going over those lava fields. They must have been cold. Oh, yeah. But it was a desperate case. The men, women, and children must be taken to some place where they could exist. Yeah. So for two more days, they fought the conditions and finally reached a point in the valley where the snow had almost disappeared and the country was somewhat more unbroken. Was it over by Shoshone? Uh, I believe that it had to be, yeah. knowing what we know about this area. But, okay. you know, feed for their stock was getting better at this point. Game was more plentiful. And everybody was feeling pretty good over their victory. But the immigrants realized that it was too late in the season to go any farther west. So it would be impossible to cross the ranges at that season. So they asked the squaw and Lepree to guide them to some place in the Snake River Valley where they could find the most suitable winter quarters. Oh, boy. And I think you know where we're headed on this. I do. Lepree told them that he knew of a small sheltered valley on Malad River where water and feed were abundant, fishing was excellent, and Gabe would be plentiful until the deer returned to the mountains in the spring and that if they would camp there for the winter and until the trapping season was over, which would be about the last of April, he and the other trappers would leave their horses with them for the winter. Uh Now, this being agreed, they pulled on down Little Wood River until the Malad was reached and then into the section now called Hagerman Valley. Hagerman Valley. Valley. Of course. Yeah. You Did know, they need licenses to fish? <laughs> you know, I think they, you know, wouldn't you have loved to fish back then? <laughs> oh, Just my. So many fish. Can you imagine that falls and everything, how oh, pretty wow. it would be? Wow. Must have been beautiful. You know, but they selected a camp on a stream, which they called La Prix Creek, but now it's called Billingsley Creek. Yeah. Have you heard of that? Oh, uh, there's a Billingsley Ranch and everything else okay. over there. Yeah. So anyway, uh, the trappers bid them goodbye, uh, traveled back on foot to their camp at the mouth of the Little Wood River Canyon. Wow. Because they left their horses there. Yeah. And how many we, miles would that be roughly? Oh, boy. About a, a 75? I'm guessing it has to be somewhere close like to that, that, from yeah. Hagerman over yeah. there. Yeah. But on their arrival, they found that the Indian wife, LaPree's wife, had moved to a more sheltered spot up the canyon where she had established a permanent camp. Yeah. And it was so it was a much better camp, and so the trappers made it their headquarters for the winter. I see. So LaPree and his wife used their camp permanently while Graves and the other trapper established a trap line on the headwaters and tributaries of this stream. And after the season was over, they traveled to the valley on the Malad, where after six months' absence, they found that the immigrants had wintered well. They were in shape with fat stock to keep going on their journey to Oregon. Well, now, did they go, uh, question here, did they go proposedly on the route of, like, over from uh, Gooding down into the canyon that way? You know, it doesn't say how they actually got down. That would have been the best way. Right, it would have. But nevertheless, they st- they rejoined the Oregon Trail and headed to Oregon. But, yeah. uh, so the trappers took their horses, and they bid the immigrants goodbye and made their way, after getting their furs, back to Fort Hall. If they got to Bliss, they could follow the road signs. They could, because there's lots of them. <laughs> anyway, Mr. Graves said it is difficult for the people of the present generation to really appreciate the condition that surrounded the early squaw man. And often in those days, uh, uh, again, uh, spoken in words of disrespect, which in most cases is totally wrong. So, anyway, there was no marriage ceremony connected with a white man taking an Indian wife. He merely uh, either here, bought lady. her or enticed her to his camp, and really? the ceremony was over. That was it. That was it? Yeah. They didn't have to, my goodness sakes. Things were a lot easier then, (laughs) weren't they? (laughs) Now, here's a story that is... It cost 10,000 bucks. (laughs) That's right. There was no alimony. So, anyway, this is a story John Graves tells. He says, uh, for all of this, I have never known a squaw man who deliberately deserted his wife. 
I have known where squaw men of some education who, as the country settled, they became prosperous and prominent, and they realized their conditions might have been different uh, had they chosen something else. Or And they figured they owed a lot of their success to their Indian wives oh, and, and families. Well, that's true with all of us. It, it I wanted true. to get that in so that you and I stay in good regard right. with our wives. Yes. Now, here's a case that happened in the early 60s. Okay? And this is what John Gray tells us. He says uh, that there was a Missourian who had left an immigrant train and established a trapper's camp on the headwaters of the Green River. And he thought that if he could get a good-looking Indian wife, it might be a good thing to do. I think we're going to be in trouble. (laughs) One day, a party of Shoshone Indians on a peaceful mission came to the Missourian's camp. The spokesman for the Shoshone wanted to trade an Indian wife or woman to the Missourian for a sack of flour. Uh, you think I'm going to say something here? You're not <laughs> going to hear it. You're leaving me. Yep. So the Missourians' first thought was that, hey, that's not a uh, well, that's not a bad <laughs> price, but he thought it was a little exorbitant, and uh, he became interested enough to ask the Indian which of the Indian women he would be trading Uh-oh. for. Oh. Okay. Now, when the Indian pointed out the only woman he could spare. The Missourian did not exactly like the looks of her. Uh-huh. So he started backtracking. Yeah, he took his flower back. He said the Indian recited the oh the best qualities of this uh, uh, of this uh, lady. Yeah. He and in fact the Indian said heap good squaw, heap stout squaw. Yeah. Heap catch him wood, heap yeah. catch him buckskin, make him moccasin. Uh huh. Okay. Now, in defense, the Missourian pointed out that she's a nice girl. <laughs> she's a nice, great personality. <laughs> that he could not spare a sack of flour, so he was backtracking. Okay. Now, the Indians could see a sack containing about one half sack of flour, and abruptly picked it up, explaining, "He all right. He all right. He all right." Yeah. And mounting his horse with the sack of flour in front of him, motioning to the other Indians, except for the Indian woman. To follow, and as they lift, they shouted back, "Heap good squaw!" And sure enough, the Missourian had a Indian wife. You know, you're telling a story here that for those of us that have been happily married for 45 years or whatever, you're on your own, buddy. I know, I know, I, and, and I don't know if it gets any better. But your anyway, tongue's tied. It is, it yeah. is. So anyway, when left alone, the Missourian kind of looked her over and. Anyway, the more he looked at her, uh, the less desirable. Send your cards and letters to Dr. Yeah. Ken Turner. It's a- <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, uh, she could pack wood. And she, yeah, she, heap good squaw. And she made herself useful, <laughs> piling up wood that yeah. she gathered until the Missourian had prepared a meal. And then without an invitation, she joined him and ate. And the Missourian studied her, and he could not find any, not even a redeeming point. On really? this, on she this, was that... Um, Let's on put it this on way. a scale of one to ten, she what a, would you say she was? I'm going to guess about a minus five. I see. So, and again, send your letters to Dr. <laughs> Ken Turner. Anyway, you know, in desperation, he told her, he says, go back to your camp. Uh-huh. Well, but she's a good squaw. Her only reply was in Indian or Shoshone, and, uh, which meant, I don't understand. I'm staying, yeah, basically. Yeah. So here's what he did. The Missourian left her at the campfire, crawled in his blanket. The next morning... She was uh, carrying wood. She refused to go. The Missourian was determined. Okay, he saddled his horse. He fastened a travoy to the horn of his saddle of of his horse yeah. and asked her to get on the travoy. Yeah, that's okay. that thing you pull behind the horse. Behind. Yeah. So hurry! She, I'm gratefully uh, almost out of time. Okay. As she obeyed the Missourian, seated himself in the saddle and made for the Indian camp, which we know was just a few miles away. When he arrived, he unfastened the travoy from the saddle, and with the Indian woman still sitting on the travoy, travoy, he left mounted his horse, and rode away. Forever. <laughs> Forever. Never to return. You know, um, we got through that story. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> Hollywood paints the uh, the Indian wives as being very good the looking, and many of them were. The beautiful Indian maiden. Yes. Now, Sacagawea yes. was, uh, you know. How do you know? She was, well, I don't know how good looking she was, but I know she was married to a Frenchman. Oh, that doesn't mean, well, okay. <laughs> and there was another one that went right through here. Her name was uh, Marie Dorian oh, yeah. with the Wilson Hunt Price. Yeah. And Started the Wilson Theater. She did. Yeah. <laughs> she, so there was a lot of really good, good 
Indian women. And, I, for some reason, I'm sweating. <laughs> okay. And you know, sometimes, and I know we're out of time. But yeah, we are, uh, boy, are we? Ever. A lot of a lot of them would actually move into the city, yeah. and build a house. And a lot of times, the Indian woman would actually put a teepee out in the front yard and still stay in the teepee. So, but it's your they, program. But they, they <laughs> some of them were very prosperous. Yes, and of course, Doctor <laughs> History has been brought to you by Minicasha Sales, thirteen twenty one East Main Street in Burley. Zach, he needs help. Anyway, don't forget they've got all your lumber. They've got all your Tartar Firm and Ranch Gates and Panels. Everything at Minicasha Sales, thirteen twenty one East Main Street in Burley. Don't leave Turner. I want to talk to you for a few minutes. Uh, also, don't forget on Thursday. We have a special program segment called uh, Cache County School Days, and we'd like to thank our two sponsors, The Child's World at 1308 Overland and Burley, and they're having their 14th annual, Ken, get over there, 14th annual October holiday toy sale. All toys, family games, books, puzzles are 25% off the week of October 24th through the 29th at A Child's World, 1308 Overland in Burley. And also the Ambulatory Surgery Center, mm-hmm, they can save you money on outpatient surgeries like colonoscopies and of course don't forget sinus surgeries everything right there helping you save money and feel better at the ambulatory surgery center 1344 highland in burley call 677-8888 let me take a look here at my list real quick and i also want to remind you about something else before we leave and that's redder showcase hello guy how you doing at 2611 overland and burley my goodness they're having a harvest value sale save money great deals on a lot of items including up to 12 months same as cash on approved credit my goodness all the whirlpool appliances and certain furniture wow you can save a lot of money and on certain mattresses twin size starting at just 99 bucks this isn't going to last long so get into redder showcase at 2611 overland in burley you stop in today. Right now we're going to send it back over to our main studios. I'll be back in three minutes. And now back to Zeb at the Ranch on AM 1230 KBAR. To reach Zeb, call 436-2244 or toll free 1-866-927-4587. And now, here is Zeb Bell. Oh, good morning and welcome back to our last segment. And I want to urge everybody to call me. I'm not going to have a guest for this segment because I have to leave early. I have a doctor's appointment and got to get on the road and go. So that'll be in a few minutes, but your calls are welcome and appreciated. 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Don't forget Clark Kaufman, your District 25B representative, encourages you to support and vote yes on HGR 5. HJR 5, which is an amendment to the Idaho Constitution to ensure the separation of powers of the executive and legislative branches. Vote November 8th. Thank you to Clark Kaufman and paid for by the committee to elect Clark Kaufman, Debbie Kaufman, treasurer. Thank you very much. Um, Let me kind of take a look here quickly. I also want to remind you about Linux and Ramsey Heating and Electric offering rebates on qualified Linux home comfort systems. Whether it's a gas furnace and air conditioner or a heat pump, you and your family will enjoy the comfort. Call them at 678-0459 and learn how Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox can save you money. You know, I give Dr. History a hard time while he's on the air, but I'll guarantee you that is one of the finest gentlemen that I've ever worked with, and I value his Dr. History segment. Dr. Ken Turner, thank you so much for the time and effort you put into this, and uh, appreciate all your stories. The man has absolutely been a blessing, and we're very fortunate to have him on this program. Thank you very much. Now, let's see. We've got to gather up to catch up. One man, one man, one young man stood alone. He stood all by himself. I'm talking about a Millican University football team player, Connor Brewer. The rest, this is how insane and insensitive Colin Kaepernick's not standing for the flag and our anthem has become. An entire university football team decided that rather than go on the sideline 
and kneel down or sit down during our national anthem, they would stay in the locker room until the anthem had been played. I've really got to watch my language on this story because I am so incensed with the idiocy and incompetency of a person starting this movement against our anthem and our flag, Colin Kaepernick. I have no respect for the young man whatsoever. And I just wish that I had an opportunity to get him on this program and denigrate him for his absolutely disrespectful actions. But one man of this football team said no. He chose to stand alone. He left the locker room, and while the band was playing the national anthem at the game, Connor Brewer stood with his hand over his heart and celebrated, participated, and honored our national anthem. One man from a football team that should be totally embarrassed. This happened on September 24th. And some of the garbage statements that came from the dean and others absolutely make me want to cringe. The community that supported the Millican University football team was and should have been outraged. And some of the comments that were made by the university, well, we're forging a new path. What? What? A new path of disrespect? Well, here's what some of the comments were. Please let there be no doubt that we have the utmost respect for the sacrifice made by those who served or do serve in our armed forces, including many of our family and friends, the football team wrote in a letter. Therefore, it is our desire to do nothing that could be viewed as disrespectful of their sacrifice. So they stayed in the locker room like a bunch of cowards that they are, and one man from their football team walked out and stood on the sideline and honored our flag. Oh, and here's another comment that I have to read. Please let there be no doubt... Uh, well, wait a minute. Well, I'll back up here just a minute. Rather than have our message be misunderstood or misconstrued, we are united in our decision to stay in the locker room until kickoff, during which time we will engage in a moment of reflection to personally recognize the sacrifice of so many and renew our commitment to living up to those most important words with liberty and justice for all, the team wrote this in a statement that was published in the Herald Review. In other words, balderdash. You know, for those of you that are 49er fans and those of you that are fans of Colin Kaepernick and for those of you that say, oh, well, they're just expressing their First Amendment, I'm going to say balderdash. Now it has gone on to the college ranks. Now it has even gone on to the high school ranks. This incompetency and idiocy of not honoring our flag and paying respect to our country. And for those that have given their lives, their lives, for this country, so that these Cretans can kneel on a knee or sit on the bench and disavow what this country stands for. And right here in this article that I found, University President Patrick White offered up a pile of academic gobbledygook. These are the words of the author, Todd Starnes, for Fox News. He said, we all need to listen to voices and opinions different from our own and listen with our hearts and minds awake to the difference. When the issues involve race and justice and differing contentions of what patriotism means, all of us can stand more education. I would not have used the word gobbledygook. You know, as a cowboy, what word I would have used. I condemn this president, Patrick White, 
and I certainly condemn 99.9 of the players, coaches, and staff of Millican University with the exception of one patriotic young man. One. That literally had the guts to leave the locker room and go out and put his hand over his heart for the playing of our national anthem. This young man, Connor Brewer, is the epitome of being an American patriot. And I loathe what the others really are. Calls are welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Don't forget Clark Kaufman, your District 25B representative. Filer area farmer and businessman is asking for your vote. For serving you again is a privilege, and he wants to thank you for your vote in advance. He has been your representative for the past two years and encourages you to vote on November 8th, paid for by the committee to elect Clark Kaufman, Debbie Kaufman, treasurer. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Mr. Bell, good morning. Um, this, uh, what a Colin Kaepernick? Mm-hmm. I hope I got that name. You did. You did. I don't watch San Francisco uh, because of them letting this player kneel, sit on the sidelines, disrespect our national anthem and being as we have so many young people who look up to these so-called professionals uh, look what's happened you just mentioned that you know the schools the junior highs the high schools it's just going to go on and on and on if they don't like it get the heck out of town you know, the money that these guys are making in all of the sports, whether it's Major League uh, Baseball, the NBA, or if it's the NFL, Kaepernick's making in round figures about $15 million. If he thinks that everybody is so oppressed and that the Black Lives Matter, et cetera, et cetera, let him take some of his $15 millions and advocate it for a foundation or some kind of a charitable help for those people. But stop. Stop with the negativity about our flag and the people that have served our country. I won't put up with it, and I will condemn anybody, anybody, if it's even here locally, I'll condemn anybody that shows disrespect for our nation and our flag. I've told people standing up next to me, uh, Hispanic individuals, you know, uh, probably didn't even have a green card in their pocket, hey, put your hand over your heart and respect the flag. Absolutely. You know, uh, I'm proud of it, and... Uh, you should be too. You're here working, you know. Absolutely, uh, sir. I really appreciate with these upcoming elections. I don't know what they do in Russia or China, but that's not too far fetched. Yeah. I really appreciate your comments this morning. I've got to get a weather forecast here in a minute, but thank you. God bless you for your thoughts. Thank you very, very much. You know, I know the left is always going to say, well, they're just practicing and exercising their First Amendment rights. Wait a minute. I'm going to go back to my high school days. There wouldn't have been one player on our football team, our basketball team, our baseball team, not one that would have even considered the disrespect to our veterans, our flag, and our country. Times, they say, have changed. Well, not for the better. I'll be very honest with you. I can look back and reverence at some of my coaches. Coach Ed Winiarski, one of the toughest men I ever met in my life. He would have taken a one-step drop kick to your behind if you had even considered such a motion. We've lost the respect for this country. And we've lost the respect for those that are laying in the cold ground with a tombstone that says they fought and died for the United States of America. I have no respect 
for Colin Kaepernick or any of his ilk. Weather forecast brought to you this half hour by Scarrow's Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome, 324-7657. They are changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time. They're your locally owned custom meat processor and have been for over 20 years. The absolute best, Scarrow's Meats. Here's Gina with the weather. It's going to be cloudy and windy today for this Tuesday. No big surprise, as it is mid-October. Winds out of the west, right around 25 miles. Winds out of the west, right around 20 miles an hour for today. High of 49 is what we're looking at tonight. Low of 32. Tomorrow, everything is going to be calming down. Sunny skies, high of 53. Overnight, low of 31. For Thursday, partly cloudy skies, high of 60. Overnight, low of 35. And it's going to be nice as we kick off the weekend. Sunny skies, high of 65. Yesterday's high was 53. The overnight low was 38. That is your weather for Zebeth Rand. Thank you, Gina. Brought to you by Scarrow's Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome. Don Scarrow and the crew changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time. Absolutely. By the way, don't forget, vote yes, November 8th on HJR5. Your voice needs to be heard, and you should always be able to hold our state government accountable. Vote yes on HJR5. Don't let activist courts take away our legislators' authority to approve or reject agency rules. Vote yes on HJR5. Paid for by Speaker Scott Bed. Key, Representative Fred Wood, and Senator Kelly Anthon. You know, I have to uh, take off a little bit early here today, and I want to thank Wheels. I've got a doctor's appointment in Twin. I've got to get on the highway and zoop in there right now. Before I do that, I want to remind you that tomorrow we've got some outstanding individuals on the program. We have uh, tomorrow Dave Beagle from Indianapolis, Indiana. David Horowitz, you've seen him on all the major national newscasts and TV shows. David Horowitz is going to be on the program. And then also our Idaho Fishing Game Report. All of that is coming up on tomorrow's show. I want to remind you and thank you about our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations. Big, big fall tire sale going on right now. Need tires? Now's the time to get them. Going to have a trip? Going to go someplace for the holidays, Thanksgiving, whatever? Now's the time to check on all the tires. They've got them for your passenger car, your SUV, your pickup, and many of which are on sale. Don't pass this up. And of course, the very best in brake service, front end alignment shocks and struts batteries it's getting colder out there in the morning you want to make sure that battery is going to turn over that four-wheel wonder and have that engine start well make sure you got a great battery they'll check your battery if it's not going to work they've got excellent ones to replace right there at your magic valley lush Schwab tire centers lane and rupert dave on blue lakes and twin mike and buell mike and jerome the twist family and paul daniel on pole line in twin falls and my buddy randy on overland and burley your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers. We are going to put it back in the box for right now. And, Wheels, if you would, play the uh, spot for Senator Craig, and then I'll let you have it for the music up to the top of the hour in CBS. God bless everybody the way things were, the way things ought to be. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 8.06.